Gapreet Korsodi. Today is Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. I was 13 in June of 1984. Bowmanville, Ontario, or as I call it, beautiful Bowmanville. I was in high school. I remember it well. I, well, I remember it in sequence as um, when the uh, Indian Army first invaded, uh, first surrounded the Barsop, when um, they had a standoff there, when people were allowed in and out, and then all of a sudden people weren't allowed out, and then the attack. And I remember watching it with my mom, dad, and brother um, on TV, on CBC News and just the shock and horror of it all. And I remember my dad, the only time that my dad had a smile on was when he saw the Sadars who were in the Indian Army leaving their um, regiments and going to help uh, those who were in the Golden Temple to fight against the Indian Army. I remember complete heartbreak. Um, we were living in a small town and it was everyone in that town, uh, no one was Sikh, we were the only Sikh family there. And I remember feeling just complete heartbreak and thinking these people don't understand how much pain I feel right now. And also feeling stunned, like how could, how could this happen? How could the Indian army invade a religious place? And reading it in the newspapers and the newspapers not under the mainstream media not understanding it either and think saying that well they invaded because of terrorists inside and thinking no you don't get it you're just you're not understanding my dad Kuldeep Singh Sodhi um, was a very big Khalistani he um, was a very proud Khalistani too and I remember just the outrage that well, he never wavered in his desire for Khalistan, but it even it got more people involved and he he finally felt a sense of relief because people were seeing what he saw. People were seeing the genocide of Sikhs. And it was people people coming in and into the movement and my dad thinking, Shukriya, you know, people are finally understanding what I've been seeing. And my parents also um, arranged a protest in Toronto at that time. Um, didn't tell us about it until afterwards because they wanted us to stay in school. <laughs> and they, my mom said she was just amazed at people coming from all over. Um, every side that she could see at Queen's Park, um, the legislative buildings here, um, to protest the, the Indian government's invasion. I remember Indra Gandhi being killed and once again my, my dad, um, not only did my dad and mom listen to watch Sorry the News at night, but they, they would also listen to BBC on the radio in the morning and my dad listening to it on BBC and me thinking, oh, and then not really thinking much of it, going to school and then watching the horror of people being killed in front of your eyes and the way that they were killed and then the horror at the Indian sorry at the mainstream media once again not projecting the real numbers of it I, I can't say that I was surprised completely because I was so involved in um, well this watching I was so involved watching my parents <laughs> be involved in um, with Khalistan that I I wasn't completely surprised, but I was just, I was absolutely horrified. And then also hearing that some of my family members were attacked and thankfully got away. And people don't realize that the attacks only, weren't only in Delhi. They were all over. My, my uh, mamaji was attacked in Jabalpur, you know, and he was saved. And it was just, it was, you know, once again, heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching for these families. and. To this day, people haven't gotten, they haven't had any justice. There is no justice done in India. And those who started the attacks, you know, they're, they're free. And it just, as you can see, I, I'm speechless and I'm, I'm choking up because of it. My dad was, I always say he was a big Khalistani. <laughs> He was very active and he was a spokesperson to the media. We, there was a reporter, um, Robert Montes, 
for the Globe and Mail who told me, he sent me an email when I told him my dad was dying and said that your dad had this unbelievable way of explaining to the, explaining what was happening in the Sikh community to the media and he said it was just so heartwarming and your dad was just such a welcoming person. Um, I remember my dad going to meetings all the time, you know, and he would, he had his own business and he would work a long day and he would at night he would go to meetings to discuss what could be done and you know some of the things they did they they made passports mm -hmm. which are just phenomenal um you know my dad would talk about these things in bowmanville to our neighbors to his friends to his colleagues and uh we you know he was he was known as mr Kalistan in bowmanville <laughs> I, I remember my um, I remember the protests. I mean, going back even farther before '84, I remember we have a videotape of a protest that my dad helped organize in Toronto against uh, the Indian government. I think it was 1973. So this has always been a part of my life, and my dad finally let me go to a rally with him in um in new york and i believe it was in 83 or 84. um we took a bus down to new york city indira gandhi was coming to uh, new york to speak at the un and uh we were out there protesting and it was the first time my dad ever let me go with him which made me so excited and so nervous at the same time and uh just watching him take a lead and when people started getting really upset and they're letting their emotions go just having watching my dad calm the whole situation down just was just amazing and you know at uh, rallies in Toronto too there was um, a rally outside the Indian consulate in Toronto in I think it was 84 and no it was uh, 83 and just watching um, it, intentions were running high and watching my dad try and calm people down yeah and, and that's what just was amazing about him is tension would tensions would rise and my dad always said the most important thing he always said was that the community has to get together let's get together as one and he always would tell me you know he would I remember him telling me about his father my my bapu telling him you know he, he would show he, my dad a stick and say if you have one stick it breaks easily but if you have a bunch of sticks they don't break and my dad would say that's what we need to do in the Sikh community and I remember my mom my mom would just shake her head sometimes and go she'd go oh sorry so <laughs> but in her heart and you know, she would say that to his face, and then to us, she'd say, "We're Khalistanis, okay." You know, and and I think it was her way of of just playing devil's advocate to him. And um, and he he depended on her. Like he would. Uh, I remember my dad coming. He would have an idea, or he was going to give a speech somewhere, and he would ask my mom, say, "Okay, this is what I want to say." And my mom working with him to correct, not to correct, but you know, to enhance his speech. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was so heartwarming to see. And just to, to have both of my parents so active and so caring about the Sikh community, not only in Canada, but in India and as the community as a whole was, it just, you know, to this day it brings tears to my eyes. Oh yeah, sometimes you just want to be a kid. You know, I, I remember um, going to visit um, my friend Kavul and um, and deciding that I have my own opinions and her brother saying something to me and I said uh, you know I was playing devil's advocate about Khalistan and he said how can Kuldeep Singh Sodhi's daughter not be a Khalistani and I said a you're making an assumption and B Kuldeep Singh Sodhi's daughter is Kuldeep Singh Sodhi's daughter to you he's Kuldeep Singh Sodhi to me he's dad <laughs> I, mean, I think one of my favorite stories about my dad is um, he was so busy with Khalistan. He was so busy with his business. Like, I, and both were so important. And his family was important too. My mom was um, very active with um, community organizations. So the Professional Women's Club and Multicultural Association, Ethnocultural Associations. And she would go to meetings um, 
and she would drop me off at figure skating lessons. I used to go four times a week, but it was every Wednesday since I can ever remember. And she would ask my dad to pick me up afterwards. And my dad would be on the phone with someone talking about uh, strategies to to lobby governments for Khalistan, strategies to uh, you know to for protests, strategies uh, to get the word out to the to the greater society and to get into the UN. And um, I would call collect home and go uh hi dad mm -hmm. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd, he'd look at, he'd call and go where are you what, aren't you upstairs doing your homework uh no dad i'm at the place i always am on wednesday nights i'm at the arena where's your mom um well dad she she's at pick a meeting and he'd say oh oh i'm on my way and then someone else would call about Khalistan. <laughs> So I'd call him back and go, uh, hi, Dad. <laughs> and by the time we got home, my mom was pulling into the driveway. <laughs> but it's not that he forgot us. It's he was so invested in everything. I mean, as soon as he realized his mistake, he would just come and grab us, grab me. But it's, it's one of those stories I would say to him over and over again. And he'd look at me and go, my dad used to call me Pito. And he'd go, Pito. Why do you remember things like that? <laughs> Can you not forget stuff like that? And they're like, Dad, it's a part of who you are. To everyone else, you are Kuldeep Singh Sodi Kalasani. To me, your dad. It's funny because I was talking to someone at work about it and I told her my dad was a Khalistani and she's Punjabi Hindu and I said why do I feel like I have to defend this to you and she said well you don't because I understand mm -hmm. and unfortunately I think Khalistani is synonymous with terrorist and with the past and I think a lot of Khalistanis I think a lot of people got involved for their own personal gain and I think that and a lot of people did that by, quite honestly, collecting money for themselves, for their own personal gain. And I think that's the unfortunate part of it, because honestly, there was the personal, there was no personal gain involved. It was for the Sangat. It was for everyone. And I think, I think that's sad. And I think the Indian government had a great public relations strategy, which the Sikh community had a hard time fighting against and that's what makes me really sad because as I tell people I'm a proud Khalistani when I'm at um, a Nagarkirtan and people start go saying Khalistan Zindabad I'm one of the first people to say it <laughs> when I you know it's I'm just I'm so passionate about Khalistan that and it's so important to happen and I think people don't realize that Khalistan isn't about six only it's about Punjab you know uh, my dad and mom used to say that the British partitioned Punjab because it was the strongest state and it was the strongest state with Hindus Muslims Christians and Sikhs and they wanted to weaken it so that it couldn't fight back after partition and I think that people have to realize that it's about Punjab as a whole and all of the people of Punjab. Right now, the youth of Punjab, once again, are um, they're feel, experiencing economic hardships, they're f experiencing social hardships, and they, I think, they're starting to get frustrated with it again. And, you know, if there's another person to come and galvanize them in a positive way, I think that would be great. It still to this day breaks my heart and it breaks my heart that people don't realize how horrific it is to a invade a place of religious sanctity and B they don't understand the death that happened there I I, I, I was told that um, in around 95 or 96 you could still see the bullet holes and you could still see the blood um, in the marble at the Barsa but the SGP has eradicated that so people are forgetting and that's what's what saddens me is that people don't remember or people want to forget and they go well, let's move forward and I think we need to remember what happened and we need to bring you know, when the community together to remember, because they're, you know, I expected 
a big commemoration and you know I commemorated in my heart because there was nothing out there and we need to remember.